women new rights that would not be achieved in the Christian world for centuries. The first was the right to life. The Quran forbade the practice of female infanticide, which had been common in early Arabia. Women were also given the right to uh, an education, to be duly educated as men were, um, to inherit, which meant that they could buy and sell property, which again would mean that they would have to um, undertake business transactions. The custom of Muslim women wearing veils is mistakenly pointed to as another indication of Islam's prejudice against women. The emancipation of women was a project that was very dear to the Prophet's heart. There is nothing in the Quran about all women having to be veiled or secluded in a separate part of the house. This is a practice that the Muslims picked up three or four generations after the death of the Prophet. I feel that being a contemporary educated woman is far more in line with what the Prophet would have aspired for, for a woman than what we've seen maybe throughout recent Islamic history. Muhammad had achieved enormous success. His followers had grown in less than 20 years from a handful to thousands of devotees. But he could not complete his mission so long as the holy site of the Kaaba remained home to idols. In January of the year 630, Muhammad set out for Mecca at the head of an army of 10,000. As the Muslims approached the holy city, Meccan people made no attempt to resist. It was clear that the old gods of the Quraysh were powerless in the face of Islam. The prophet had no desire for blood. He issued an amnesty as a symbol of his wish to unite all people as the children of one God. The only